Good morning and welcome back to Backfire. I'm Jim and today I get to introduce you to one of the hottest rifles of the year. That's right, this is the CZ457. It is a sweet little rifle. Why is it so popular? Well, because this is chambered in 22 long rifle, which is probably the only cartridge that any of us can afford to shoot right now with ammo prices how they are. I too, like many of you, have been shooting a lot more 22 than ever before, and I've found that it's really dang fun and good practice. So today, let's take a look at the CZ457. All right, let's start this review out with the good stuff. We're gonna look at some groups from the CZ457. Before we can show it, I have to provide a little bit of context. There are a lot of different variations of the CZ457. Some of them have a match grade chamber. That's really critical for 22. 22 has a lot of different ways that, that the manufacturers can cut the chamber. There's a Bentz chamber, a match chamber, a sporting chamber, and a lot of custom ones like Voodoo's Ravage Chambering. There are so many different ways and they all make a little bit of a difference about getting that bullet in concentric and right into, into the bore of the barrel. So this one does not have the match grade chamber. There are versions that do. And yet the accuracy is awesome. This right here is with Lapua Center X. That's a 0.452 inch group. Then we go to SK Standard Plus, a little bit more cost effective of ammunition. And the group was a 0.574. And then Ely Match, we go to 0.83. Those are awesome groups. That's at 50 yards and there was a decent amount of wind, which is why I didn't record more of this video outside. Those are representative groups of what I've seen just overall with this gun. I've put a ton of ammo through it and I have found that the Center X overall has been the most accurate ammo with it. But again, we're maybe talking about a tenth of an inch difference at 50 yards between that and standard SK Standard Plus, which is quite a bit less expensive of ammunition to be popping through this thing. For me, I'm gonna lose more competitions by more than a tenth of an inch anyway, and so I think I'm gonna shoot more SK Standard Plus. Now, this isn't the only Precision 22 that I have. I also have a Voodoo, a Christensen, and a couple others that I'll be showing on the channel in the future here, and really, this gun is hanging with guns that are way more expensive. This one is shooting groups just about as good. Hey, quick cut in on this target, by the way. I don't have any way for you guys to financially support Backfire. And YouTube is doing everything it can to get me off the platform. My last seven uploads on this, on this channel, YouTube has demonetized. And then, they, and then I had to send it to a manual reviewer and they said, yeah, it's fine. And then I was finally able to monetize. That's pretty scary that they've done it with every single video. Um, I hope they don't kick me off the platform. I don't know why they would. I'm following all the rules. But this target is a way you can help me to stay online. It's at backfire.tv slash targets. It's just a PDF that you can purchase for just a few dollars, and then you'll have it for the rest of your life. Anytime you go shooting, you just press print, and you have your targets ready to go. I got really sick of going to Sportsman's Warehouse and spending 15 bucks on targets all the time, and then I'd get them, and they made no sense, you know? They have like the lines here, but they're vertical and horizontal, and so when you put your reticle over it to try to shoot, you can't see the lines where you're aiming because the reticle covers it up. Or sometimes they're just too fat or too tiny at 100 yards. It's really frustrating, and so I just made my own. I think it is a cool design. It's simple, it'll save you money, and you can support Backfire for just a few dollars. That's backfire.tv slash targets. To me, more important than the you know pure from a bench accuracy is just how well am I going to shoot it, shoot it in a realistic situation, like in an NRL 22 match or we're shooting varmints, right? Well, this stock is awesome. It's very well designed. I like a lot of things about it. First of all, it just looks really cool, right? 
I love that it has a flat forend because you know if you're resting this on a trap ladder or whatever you might be resting this on it's going to sit flat drives me nuts when rifle manufacturers have a curved forend like we're only taking shots standing right and so i love seeing that that helps a lot it also has a nice indent here i don't know if you can see that groove real well but it just feels comfortable in the hand having that when you are supporting it by hand I love the vertical grip here that helps to get your hand in the right position and then your thumb can rest just right there instead of beer can gripping it so we get the trigger torqued. Right here is where most people are going to grip that gun. But I really wish they had gone higher on the cheek piece. It's just not high enough. In fact, I'll show you right here. This is where I would shoulder a gun and feel like I have a solid cheek weld. But I have to go up there to see through the scope. So there's about an inch. Now, I do have the scope up a little bit high, but you kind of have to because realistically, you're going to be adding a pick rail to this scope. And so I do wish they had given us an adjustable cheek piece from the factory, that would have been nice. The other thing that I wish they had done differently on this stock is, since again, this is a Precision 22, if you're using this in competition and you slide into a ladder or something, well, where is that ladder gonna hit? Right there on the button to release the magazine. I wish they'd given us some kind of barricade stop here, something to protect that magazine catch from, from being accidentally triggered. Jumping now to the trigger. I was nervous about the trigger on this gun and here's why. It's because I have a different CZ. This is a CZ. Um, 720 shotgun and this gun ah, really frustrates me. CZ totally let me down with this gun. It's a 20 gauge, it's a youth model that I bought for my kids. It looks beautiful, looks like a good shotgun, but the trigger pull on this thing, let me show you the trigger pull on this. I already checked safe. Yeah, we just maxed out the gauge. <laughs> we maxed out the gauge at eight pounds. You gotta like get a running start to, to pull this trigger. I mean, I know it's a shotgun and so it's gonna be a little bit heavier, but eight pounds, especially where this is a youth model. This is intended for youth. And so I was shooting this with my kids and I noticed my kid had two fingers in the trigger guard pulling the trigger. And I said, whoa, who taught you that? And he says, oh, I, I can't pull it. It's too heavy without it. And I tried it, sure enough. Um, so it's really frustrating. I, it's things like this where I'm like, did you even try? Did you even test out the gun before putting this into the market to a youth, uh, youth model? However, the CZ457 has an awesome trigger. Mine is down to right at one pound. It's really light. For a Precision 22, it is sweet. I love the trigger, big fan of it. I think they did a great job with it. Feeding is maybe one of the most important things on a 22. 22 just is notorious for not feeding terribly reliably, but the CZ457 just fixes it. It is excellent on feeding. I've had very, very few rounds catch. I haven't had any failures to extract at all. It works really well. I do wish, however, in relation to feeding, this is my number one complaint about the gun. Why did they send this with a five round magazine? Ah, that's really frustrating. Almost everything in 22 is a 10 round magazine, especially because so many people are gonna use this in NRL 22 matches, and you need a 10 round magazine because each stage you may shoot eight or 10 rounds. Why they sent this with a five, I'll never understand. It could have only cost them a couple more dollars in manufacturing to give us the 10 round magazine. And I'm sure that every buyer would have appreciated that. This and the pick rail are the two pieces that I really feel like, ah, why didn't you just set it up the way that you know everybody's going to set this up anyway? It would have made a big difference for me. Nevertheless, it does feed very reliably. I, having gone through a lot of 22s that became frustrating or as soon as they get dirty, it starts to be hard to get everything feeding. This thing just goes every time. I don't feel like I have to, you know, check, did I get around in there? Just I can stay in the scope every time and it will go. 
So that has been awesome. One of the reasons that this gun is so popular is they make models of this that are very inexpensive. And that means it will fit into NRL 22's base class, where there are certain price restrictions for your, your rifle and scope. And so I have this one set up with an arc and scope, which I think is just a perfect match for this, uh, for what I'm trying to accomplish with it. Overall, I really like this. It's a great rifle, a great scope, and I'm gonna be excited to take this one to a competition this weekend where my kids are gonna do their first NRL 22 match.